Have you ever been so overwhelmed in investing, like from the unknowns of the current market or your own financial situation, that you're left unable to take action? I've been there. I've been paralyzed from unexpected bills. Complicated investment terminology left me feeling helpless and too intimidated to move forward. I'm Susan Elliott, and in this video, I'm gonna talk through a method so that you can move through your investing uncertainty with a new exercise that I've just read from this book, Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal. Although, there we go, that's the actual book cover. I'm just holding my Kindle. While his book explores how we can learn to be happier with our work and more productive or creative or successful, I really like these ideas in terms of feel good investing or how we can feel better about investing and thus achieve more and do more and earn more. Investing should feel good. And as Ali notes, positive emotions are the fuel that drives the engine of human flourishing. Mm, love that quote. Let's dive in. Why are we talking about uncertainty? Uncertainty is not a feel good emotion. And when we feel bad, we achieve less. When it comes to investing, this means that we're not getting our money working for us. We're not seeing a return on our investments or we're simply not investing at all. Ali reminds us that humans have an innate aversion to what we don't know or what we're not certain about. If we're uncertain about the market, because we don't understand what's going on, and most people don't, even smart economists, then we're likely to avoid it. This is a big reason why I create these videos and why Good Egg does what it does, helping to educate people and show them pathways to invest in real estate without spending more of their time, but mostly to educate people. Because when we don't understand something, our uncertainty is higher and we're more likely to close ourselves off from the opportunities that would allow us to progress forward. And in this case, that's building our long-term wealth and reaching our ultimate financial freedom goals. We know this from multiple studies conducted around a measure called the Intolerance of Uncertainty Inventory, or IUI. This inventory was originally developed back in the 90s by scientists that were interested in how well we tolerate uncertainty and the potential consequences that can result if we aren't very tolerant of that uncertainty. Like, if we aren't very tolerant to the uncertainty that our kids will go to school this next week because of the blizzard we're seeing in the forecast, we're more likely to experience anxiety around how we're going to work from home with our two little noisy rugrats running along outside our door, knocking, knocking, so that mommy will come out and play horsey over and over and over again. Along with many more studies, researchers found that the relationship between uncertainty, anxiety, paralysis, all consists of multiple processes that reinforce all of those, that reinforce that loop. In other words, the more intolerant of uncertainty we are, the more likely we're gonna experience those uncomfortable and paralyzing emotions. In my situation, that might mean I don't get any work done at all because of how uncertain I am, which isn't very productive of me. One consequence is, is that we can simply make something a really big deal even when it isn't, when we're that uncertain of the future. Ali says we overestimate what's at stake. Someone who's already anxious will think that the uncertain event is going to be worse than it already is. If you're dealing with uncertainty investing, this is likely going to prevent you from making any investment at all even in ones that seem less risky. Maybe we just hoard our money under a mattress. Ali cites all this research to point to why we procrastinate and why uncertainty in our tasks lead us to be putting off those tasks down the road. But I think that this can also apply to investing and why we don't invest. This idea can help us make more informed investment decisions so that we don't cripple our long-term wealth building progression, which is our big ultimate goal in investing anyways. So what does this this uncertainty make us do? And how can we counteract it to keep up with our investing goals despite market uncertainty? Uncertainty can make us do three things. First, this type of fear or anxiety from uncertainty can make us hyper vigilant. We may start reading more news articles, even the clickbaity ones that aren't necessarily true statements, but are pulling out the really sensational text from that article and blowing everything out of context. These headlines are likely to make us feel worse. Second, we stop seeing the good signs 
simply because we're not actually looking for them. You're more likely to miss an opportunity to invest in something a little bit less risky because you're, it's not even on your radar to be looking for that. Even this is a subconscious level here. Or third, we become avoidant. Or rather, our brain adopts behavioral and cognitive avoidance strategies to protect us and get us out of danger as soon as possible, like away from the lion that's chasing us. Thanks, brain. There's no lion. Avoidance in investing means that you might keep your money in that savings account for the rest of the month, maybe for the rest of the year, and you don't actually deploy it and you begin to reduce your progress towards those long-term goals. You're taking action in the short term that's not in alignment with your long-term goals. Ali's big point here is that uncertainty creates a big, thick fog. This fog makes our ultimate goals hidden from our current viewpoint. The fog hides our true inspiration, our true purpose, behind the actions that we're trying to take right now, our investing actions right now, for example. In investing, this might mean reaching your goal of financial independence or saving up enough money to send your kids to that fancy college or buying that luxurious custom-built sprinter van with handcrafted wood cabinetry and soft ambient LED lighting, lifted 4x4 suspension and all-terrain tires, a harmonious blend of rugged capability and artisanal comfort. Okay, that's just me. Uncertainty makes us forget why we're investing in the first place. Okay, just pause here. If you're still watching and you like this content, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so we know to make more of it. This is where the commander's intent exercise comes in. Ali presents this idea to combat procrastination, but I think also it works well for investing here and combating the uncertainty that prevents us from making our investments towards our long-term goals. The commander's intent was created for soldiers to be guided by a sense of why rather than a sense of how. That way, when the plan stopped working, they could still move forward, working towards their ultimate why or their goal of the mission without getting paralyzed by things not going according to plan. Because things never go according to plan. They could improvise and still work towards the why of the mission. So if our mission is to build long-term wealth, you can also use these three components of the commander's intent to move forward, despite any curveballs that the market cycle might throw at you. First, know the purpose behind your mission. Do you want to build a big retirement nest egg? Do you want a fully kitted out adventure van? Second, know the end state that you're aiming for. Do you want to be able to have enough passive income so that you can quit your job? Do you want to be able to go camping in any weather in luxury? Okay, so those numbers one and two are fairly similar. Those are your why. Finally, what are the key tasks you need to accomplish your mission? This is the step you need to take this year, this month, in order to make that happen. Likely, you need to keep investing. And when we have that end goal in our sights, it's much easier to motivate and do what it takes to be able to invest now, find those good opportunities now, because suddenly you're motivated by that long-term vision. You're releasing yourself from this fog of uncertainty. When you're grounded by this true intent, you can start to look for those opportunities. Ali beautifully reminds us with a whole lot of research summaries and analyses and exercises that success doesn't lead to feeling good. Feeling good leads to success. And who doesn't want to be successful in their investing? No one. Everyone wants to be successful. You're likely going to want to start to find an investment that's a little bit less risky. I just created a video and I'll link to it up above here about a stable cat passive income source from real estate that has fixed monthly payments, which significantly reduces your risk. And it's a form of real estate investing, passive real estate investing nonetheless. So start here by just investigating a new opportunity in preferred equity investing. You're gonna see that this fog of uncertainty starts to clear up when you start taking steps, your key tasks towards your ultimate mission goal here. All right, let me know in the comments if you do anything else to get through your uncertainty in investing and keep progress towards your long-term goal. I'd love to hear about it. And be sure to subscribe and like this video and we'll see you next time. Thanks.